You're watching Chewing the Cut with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. And it looks the same, only better. Uh, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> what have you got for us today, Mike? Well, this week I've got the answer to an age-old joke and it's not what you're expecting. On screen now you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, the TV for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. <laughs> and of the names of people who've interacted with or followed us travel across the bottom of the screen, we get ready for Lee and the showbiz. <laughs> How do we feel about a remake? There's been too many of them, isn't there? Uh, depends yeah. on what we're remaking. Wizard of Oz. Uh, that classic. So The Wizard of Oz like. is going to be remade, but it's going to be made with an LGBTQIA plus slant. You mean it wasn't originally? Well, not officially. It's what people read into it. But so it's going to be it's going to be redone by the blackish creator Kenya Barris. Okay. Um, black, the blackish is quite. A, I find it quite funny that. It's one of those that's like on Channel 4 or E4. You just have to go searching for it. Um, so he has he has written and directed... Searching for it. Searching for it. Um, he's written and directed a modern reimagining of The Wizard of Oz. And what he's saying is, is that the original was an, an allegory and a reflection on the way the world was at the time, mm -hmm. with things like the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. Now we're going to turn a mirror on where we're at right now. So we're going to take disparate characters from the LGBTQ community, from different cultural communities and socioeconomic communities. That was a lot of words, that was. And tell a story that reflects the world. I think that this is the best time to do that. OK, so what do those words mean? I don't know, but they sound very important. Shall okay. we see a picture of him? Yes. Shall we see a picture? A picture of um, so so. Here he is in his his lovely sitting room with with, with an, an owl, owl <laughs> as you do, um, and, that a, and mean, a lovely is it a falconry. I don't know. Perhaps that's the new Hollywood thing. Just having an owl sat on your hand. Hmm. An well, owl. It always sounds, sounds very a bit red weird. suit, and he's not happy about it though, does he? What having an, an owl. owl on his arm? Hmm. So it's basically going to be loosely. Um, um, based on the actual original tale okay. by Lyman Frank Baum. Um, <laughs> why is that funny? The name just made me chuckle. Just made you chuckle. Um, but it's kind of going to be more queer, okay. if possible. So he said, I'm quite nervous because it's a massively popular thing. Hopefully my movie can last as long as the original. No. Mm, it's not the first time that it, The Wizard of Oz has been kind of reimagined. Wicked. Wicked. We've got the Wiz, yeah, um, with Michael Jackson. I think we've got a picture of of the. Um, I was always misunderstood. I misunderstood that that show when people like went, "Oh, let's go and watch the Wiz." I was like, "Not what I was expecting." You weren't alive when it was out. Was it not? No. Okay. We've, so we've got a picture of the original film cast. So that's the original. Well, the original, the 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 most famous version of, of the Wizard of Oz. Then we've got the poster for the Wiz. Which was which was released in nineteen nine? No, it wasn't. It was released in nineteen seventy eight. Oh, okay. Um, Michael Jackson was in it. Diana Ross, and then we have like the Broadway musical, and so there's been loads and loads and loads of different versions of it. I've never actually watched The Wiz. Mm. Just thought I'd put that out there for you. Um, there is, <laughs> there is another. So simultaneously, there is another version of The Wizard of Oz being made as well. In Hollywood, so they're going to be the battle of the. Is Wizard it just of out of copyright by any chance? Quite possibly could be. A bit like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Mm, but we've not seen any sort of like, you know, Wizard of Oz horror film type or even porn. I bet, I bet there is a Wizard of Oz porn there out is there. Return, there's there's a, a Return to Oz style porn. Oh, with the wheelers. Ooh. Yeah, but they have dildos on the hands. Instead. Oh, no! How would you find it, Mike? Oh, no, never mind. Tell me later. Um, so... It's over there on the shelf DVD. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll, borrow, I'll bother it. Uh, buzz it, buzz it, buzz it. Borrow it. Just going down with the kids. Anywho! <laughs> Let's go on to another classic. OK. So, have you, ever, have you ever either seen the film Kinky Boots or the stage show? Stage show. A little bit of Sean Connery there, stage it show is. of Kinky Boots. Kinky Boots? Yeah. Kinky Boots is the story of the... Um, shoe so, factory. Yeah, that kind of goes into manufacturing shoes for drag queens. Have you seen it? I'm aware of, of Red. 
with it being the colour of sex and danger and signs that say, do not enter. I don't know what you're saying. It's from Pinky Boots. Oh, Dear okay. God, please tell me I've not inspired something burgundy. Oh, you, you're, a, you're a big Red. fan of it, aren't you? Red. Red. Yeah, yeah. Red is the colour of sex and danger and signs that say, do not enter. Yes, I'm aware of the work of Pinky Boots. That's this week's show business. Um, so, Harvey Firestein, legend in in the the community of musicals <laughs> and theatre, stage and screen. He wrote the musical with Cindy Lauper. Lauper? Lauper. Lauper. Cindy Lauper. <laughs> Cindy Lauper. Um, that's them on uh, getting the walk of fame in Hollywood. Uh-huh. Um, so what he's basically saying Did they share is, a star? I, I think they might have got a star each, possibly. Oh. Well, that's good, because she just wants to have fun. That's all oh. she really wants. Oh. Just some fun. So, basically... When the, the working week is done... <sighs> do you want to carry on with the... Do you know any more lyrics? Oh, about girls just want to have fun. Yeah. They just want to... They want to have... OK. So... <sighs> they're going to make a film version of the musical which is quite often what happens. So they're making a film of a... Mu of the mu of the, so, so they're making a film So originally it was a musical film that, that became was a, film. a musical. And now they're making a film of the musical. So it's going to be a filmed musical. That, so basically what he's saying is, is that he has kind of decided who he wants to star in the musical version. Okay. So he thinks that Harry Styles would be glorious... I don't think there is a character called Glorious. I think he's just generally saying he would be glorious. Um, and the role of Charlie, mm -hmm. who is the, the shoe factory owner. Um, and he thinks that that um, Bruno Mars would be really good as Lola. Yeah, I can see. I can see People that. People not happy with it. Why? They say no. No. No, Harvey Firestein. We don't want that choice. They say, no, we don't want it. Well, who are we having instead, then? I don't know. I don't know. Who do you think would be good in it? You don't know. Don't care. They've already made it into a movie. It was a movie. It yeah, but it was just a movie. play. It wasn't. I didn't have songs in it. It did. No, we didn't have. He to... walked into my life. Yeah, but it was. Now it's ticking over. Oh God! How much time have I got left? And now it's beautiful. Originally on Broadway, Lola was played by Billy Porter. Yes. So this is that's a, the poster of the actual film. Mm -hmm. um, she was in As If. There were yeah. There was quite. There's quite. I think it's not as old as you think it is. There's quite a lot of actors there that are still kind of like so. They're still alive, is what you were going to say. Still, there. They're still <laughs> acting and in, in stuff. So the guy behind the one that was in As If, mm -hmm. he's um, what's his face? In thingy. Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. 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 Um, so whether it will get made, I don't know. But who will be in it? We don't know either. We're just going to wait and see. <laughs> so really, it was just. Uh, do you remember Kinky Boots? I've never seen Kinky it? Boots. I've never seen the film. It's a brilliant film. I like the film. I've never seen the, the musical. Perhaps I should. <clears throat> anyway. Last bit of showbiz news. Sydney Worldwide Pride. No. Sydney World Pride. There we are. <laughs> Sydney World Pride 2023 has been announced. So I guess who's guess who's going to be headlining it? Danny Minogue. No, boo. No, do you not boo Danny I, Minogue. I can boo Danny Minogue in Why? her in her petite collection. <laughs> um, I was going to say, <laughs> let me know she's released a particularly line. So, so her big sister has been announced as Sydney World Pride's headline performer in the opening ceremony. Older sister. Yeah, Kylie well, is big the older sister. One. Big sister. She's tiny. Well, they both are kind of the same size. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, they're doing the Sydney World Pride opening concert. I'm sorry. What? That's Kylie Minogue. It is. Looks a lot like Danny Minogue right now. Well, the sisters, aren't they? So they're going to show... No, as in, no, as in more so than usual. There's, there's been work had there. Well, they've, obviously there has been work They've there. used the same surgeon. There's, there's an airbrushing going on, the, you know. Um, so it's going, to be, it's going to take place in the Domain on the 24th of February next year, and she will d deliver a special set... For the evening. Oh. Um, so it's the first time ever World Pride is coming to the Southern Hemisphere. Ooh. Kylie said on the occasion, yes, I'm so excited to announce that I will be performing at the opening ceremony on blah, 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 blah. That was me doing a Kylie Minogue Australian. I was going to say, so, but she did it in Australian accent. But she did it in Australian accent, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's, she's very excited. She's done things like Mardi Gras before mm -hmm. and the Olympics. 
been in the Olympics, but she's done the opening ceremony. She stood there. Um, the, she said, the global rainbow family reunion we've all been waiting for. So it's going to be hosted by Courtney Act and Casey Donovan. We've got a picture of Courtney Act. And, and um, so I do, I'm not really aware of Casey Donovan. She's very Australian-based. She was in Which like... Which is helpful for Sydney. Uh, well, Pride, yes. Yeah. Uh, we know who Courtney Act is. Yeah. You know, Drag Race, all that kind of stuff. They both were on Australian Idol at one point or another. OK. Um, both... LGBTQIA+. So they're going to be hosting it. It runs for 17 days. Ooh. Can you believe it? 17 days. From the 17th of February to the 5th of March. Um, incorporating Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras and a whole host of things that you can watch online. Ooh. Will you be tuning in, Mike? Will you? I might do. That means you're not going to. Well, at the, at the time it's on, I, I will be indisposed. Will you? Yes, as I will be away. Oh. Away? It's a big holiday. Oh. To Borneo. Orangutans. Well, that's great. I'd, yes. I'd rather watch the, more than watch it. So you watch it then. OK, thanks. Anyway, that's the end of this week's show business. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know at least one of the Minogues is getting paid for something. Oh, very rude. Anyway, Don't stick around, cos up next it's Mike with the Buzz. Watching Chewing the Cud with Liam Mike. Now let's set our faces to board and go over to Mike and the Buzz. You like a large food, don't you? I like a large what? Food. Like a giant chip. I do like a giant, a wishing chip. <laughs> a wishing chip. A wishing chip. If you ever, like, get a massive chip <laughs> in, like... Went, if you ever, I went, fall in love again. <laughs> <laughs> in, like, if you go to McDonald's and you get a massive fry, uh -huh. or if you, like, you know, you go to the chippy and you get fish and chips and you get a... Ma anyway, any, any kind of massive chip, it's a wishing chip. Okay. So when you bite into it, you make a wish. A bit like a wishbone. Okay. A chip. Well, don't bite into a wishbone. No, don't. You break a wishbone. You can bite into a chip. A wishing chip. OK. Anyway, as you were, what would we say? <laughs> a wishing chip. And what would the wish be? It could be any wish I you want. want. more chips. No. No. That's, that, you can't, that's... It's just like, a, like any wish. Like if you threw a penny in a wishing well, what would you wish for? I thought I hadn't thrown a penny in the wishing well. <sighs> Wishes don't come true. Anyway, um, a mum has basically been shocked and amazed. Yes, as she reached into her bag of, of crisps. Crisps. Crisps, and has pulled out a six-incher. I thought you were going to say a human turd. <laughs> <laughs> a six-incher. Penis. A six-inch uh, crisp? Yeah, a six-inch, so it's the size of her hand. Small hands, lady. Have we not covered these before? Have we not talked no, about massive chips? What was the what Chris? What was the one with the child that looked evil that was smiling? <laughs> what was that one about? Was that oh no, it was chicken head. No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> we're not going back there. What was the chicken head? Not, we're not going back there. I can't do it. What was oh, that I've child evil for? I can't do it. Anyway, why is she? Oh, she's why got was that child? Something about a deep fried chicken head, was it? Something or a boat or something hideous she found in a something, and the child was sat there going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not happy with it. Anyway, let's talk about the massive crisp. Yes. Um, so, Gemma Carter, who's 30. Does that make a difference <laughs> to the story? <laughs> no, she's just... Uh, just 30. Just ageing her. OK. Right. Uh, was munching through a packet as she watched TV. And when she struggled to fish the crisp out, it wouldn't come out. <laughs> so she had to give it a wiggle for it to come out. Um... When she shook the packet in frustration um, and the humongous thing dropped out, covering her entire hand. Mm, OK. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it had put, covered her entire body, I would have been more impressed. And then she was reporting it from the hospital where she'd been crushed. That's dark. <laughs> it's very but... dark. <laughs> um, well, her children, Tyler Ray and Robbie... Why are you chuckling? I'm not. I'm, I'm being very judgmental. <laughs> OK. And there is no need. Tyler Ray! I, Robbie! Both had the genius, ready! Both had the ingenious <laughs> idea of taking pictures and selling it online to make oh, a bit of money. Wow. So, yeah. Well done. Well done. Then has she made a significant amount of money? Well, I'm very angered the by the, the picture. Metro. Because 
She's opened that packet of crisps the wrong way up. No, she hasn't. Yes, she has. No, she hasn't. The wrong way around. No, she, no, it isn't. She's opened them upside down. She hasn't. She has. She hasn't. She has. It says walkers and it's upside down. Don't f with me. <laughs> w A L K E R S. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> oh, then whatever. I'm not apologising. <laughs> not apologising for being wrong. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, moving on. Oh, well, is that the end of that? That's the end of that because you just. Did she eat it? No, she's not eating it. She just kept it. She kept it. Forever. Taking pictures of it, milking it for all it's worth. Okay. Very small nipples on a crisp. Anyway. <laughs> um, the age old joke, right? We've all, we all know those old jokes that like kids tell you when like small and they think they've invented a world funniest joke. Like, why did a chicken cross the road? Mm -hmm. What sense to that joke? I don't care. You don't care? No. Okay. So the answer to why did the chicken cross the road is to get to the other side, mm -hmm. right? It actually turns out that that's actually not a joke. It's more of a, it's more of a saying. Because no one would stop there while well, a horse and cart for a chicken. And the other side doesn't mean the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. But it's about suicidal chickens. What are you what are you what are you talking about? Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side of the right, road. Right. No, not the other side of the road, it's the other side. Of the world? No. As in death. Other side. To heaven. Yes. Or hell if chickens have been particularly naughty. Right, so it crossed the road to purposely get run over. No, it didn't, Mike. Where have you found this from? Ladbible.com. Oh, well, that's a fact. Fact <laughs> factual. And how have, they, how have they worked it out? Because... Doris Stokes been channeling dead chickens. <laughs> well, she's Doris dead. Stokes? <laughs> Dean probably filmed her. <laughs> I bet he did as well. I don't, I don't Doris know, Stokes I don't was know who Doris right. Stokes so, is. so right, Doris. So we've had we had um, Mary Lovestick, Derek Akora. Mm -hmm. So before him, there was Doris Stokes, a very tiny little old lady. She used to she used to like, like be the celebrity, whatever they're called, Claire sidekick, Boyant. mediums. Yeah, she's dead now though. But I thought she was small. Mm. Um. But yeah, it came out because uh, an English teacher reading and basically one person went, why are you telling the, the, the joke about chicken suicides? <sighs> and if, if you, like Lee, have despaired and given up and crossed to the other side, don't forget to share it with us at The Could TV on social media. And that brings us to our story of the week. You've been on flights, haven't you? I have, Mark, yeah. Little announcements that come over. Do you listen to them? Oh, always. Very important. What, they, what kind of things do they say? Um, we've got two more hours left to fly. Uh -huh. Shortly, cabin crew will be coming around with a selection of refreshments and beverages. For you to uh, purchase from the airlines you oh, go no, yeah. Not on the ones I go in. It's all, all part of it. Um, <laughs> um, duty free? Tea, coffee? Tea, coffee, duty free. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Put your cock away. That kind of stuff. Put your seatbelt on. Not fast your seatbelt. Put your seatbelt <laughs> on. And if I have to come back there one more time, I'm turning this plane around and we're not going to Blackpool. Going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. OK. Well, multiple people have been, should we say, shocked as someone has worked out how to hack into the tannoy on an airplane. OK. And started to play sex noises. Oh, OK. Over the tannoy. <laughs> I think I've heard this. <laughs> but they didn't know where it was coming from, no, did they? Yeah. And there was, no. No, there was like, they were getting really angry, the, the staff. The staff were getting very angry. Because there was nobody actually using it. Mm -hmm. They didn't have it. It was just, yes, lots of sex noises happening. It was more, it, I, when I listened to it, I thought it sounded like Trixie Mattel. <laughs> you know when she goes, oh, like that. Oh, those kind of noises. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey! That kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, did they find out who it was? No. <gasps> they have no idea how they did no it. No idea how they did it. No. Oh, this could be a worldwide catastrophe, couldn't it? It could be. Or 
I think if we if the person finds out how to do it and shares it with us, all the better. Quite good, because you know yeah. sometimes people. If you're in seat F14 and keep kicking the back of my seat, I'm oh. going to kick you in the face. It could open up a whole new world of communicating between seats. Mm, could do, yeah. Because you can phone other seats. Is it illegal? To, to kick people in the face, no, is it, it is, it, yeah. No, is it illegal Last. to attack, um, hack into the onboard announcement thing of, of a plane? I, I don't think it... I don't think it could be illegal. Because you could give, like, false information, couldn't you? Like what? We're currently landed in Singapore. No, you could be like, you could be like, you know, ooh, yeah, plane's going down. I'm yelling. Brace, <laughs> <laughs> brace for impact. Plane's going down. We're just bobbing along quite nicely. But I would believe it because if somebody says something on a plane, like an air hostess, they're not called that though, are they? Cabin crew said something. I would believe them. Okay. But it's not Hello, there. this is your captain speaking. <laughs> That's all you'd be doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way to Alicante. <laughs> Just tell me for the wrong destinations. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I'm playing South Africa while going to Alicante. So, yeah, I thought that was brilliant. Great. Slow week, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Know how that chicken feels now. <clears throat> Are we done then? Yeah, that's all for the this week. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us, because if that didn't have you shit in your pants with excitement, coming up is Game you. Of... <laughs> coming up is <laughs> Game of the Week. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we're going to be playing Faster Hind, and this is one for this twat bag sat next to me. Go on, off you pop. Off you go, Mike. Off you go. Rude. Flat bag. Game of the week. Are you ready, Mike? I am indeed. So you have a selection of uh, topics. Uh -huh. We have the arts and music, entertainment and celebrity, sports and pastimes, science and invention, geography and nature, or history and religion. I will go for history and religion, please. History and religion. All right, then. What name is given to the large fortified grill that could be lowered at the entrance to a castle? Ah. Uh, portcullis. Oh, Bob on. Ooh. What would you like to go for next? The arts and music, entertainment and celebrity, sports... Yes. What? Entertainment and celebrity. Please. Entertainment and celebrity. I was stopping you. Which year was the Steven Spielberg film Poltergeist released? 1978. No. This highest is clear. Oh, I want to carry in. Um, <laughs> it was 1982. <laughs> it was 1982. Or oh, before I was born to tell that something. Do you know what? Do you, want to, do you want a fun fact about that film, Mike? If I say no, will you still I'm do it? I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to cut it out or not. Um, the scene where, uh, where <laughs> the mother falls into the dugout swimming pool mm. and um, skeletons rise to the surface, mm. they were real human skeletons that they didn't know about. So really what? Skeletons. Okay, not skeletons. Not skeletons. Skeletons that they Skelling. didn't know about. The actors didn't know about. I was going to say, it was, like, it was a surprise to everybody in the set one day. What Skellington? Yeah. There. Anyway, um, so we've got arts and entertainment, sports and pastimes, science and invention, geography and nature. Because you've had the other two. <laughs> All right, okay. Your list stopped abruptly. I was confused. <laughs> Ooh, I'll go for science and invention then, please. Okay. What everyday object was invented by William Addis? The self-inflating penis pump. No, surprisingly enough, it is the toothbrush. Oh. The toothbrush. Well, I think there's been a toothbrush being used by the ancient Chinese. Mm, but he kind of officially invented... Officially. A, so they would like use, like, sticks, wouldn't they? Like bamboo sticks. I don't okay. know history. 
Um, so the last the topic that you have got left mm -hmm. before we reset it is geography and nature. Or for geography and nature then, please. The Netherlands are associated with which flower? There isn't a seizure flower, is there? <laughs> no, I was giving you a clue. Well, yeah, I thought it was a seizure. So most people would say tulips. Yes, and you would be right. I was singing Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Oh, okay. So we've reset now, so you yeah. can go for history and religion, geography and nature, science and invention, the arts and music, entertainment and celebrity, or sports and pastimes. Entertainment, please. In 1987... No, I'm going to say that again. In the 1987 war film Good Morning Vietnam, who played an American Armed Forces radio DJ? I have to be careful with this name. Robin Williams. It, it was Robin Williams. Yes, because I always say Robbie Williams. Oh, and you've been wrong. Slightly actually. different person. Good morning, Vietnam. If, okay. if it was Robbie Williams, it's let me napalm you. Oh. Funny that, though, isn't it? Um, right, okay. We've got the arts and music. Yeah, I'll do. Sports and past. Oh, you just want that. Yeah. I don't feel your heart's in this today, Mike. It's not, no, you're right. <laughs> Which instrument did Stuart Copeland play in The Police? The Police? In The Police, <laughs> he played the banjo. No. But when he was in the band, he played the guitar. No. He played the drums. Did he not play the... the, the did he not strum the, what, the, the no, lady banjo? I didn't, I didn't. Um, so, we've got sports and pastimes, science and invention, geography and nature, or history and religion. Science and nature, please. Science and nature. No, it's science and invention. Okay, I'll have that one then. Oh. What was developed by... Film. <laughs> uh, what was developed by Zenith Radio Corporation in 1950 and officially called Lazy Bones? So I get in the flux capacitor in my ear, which is not the answer I'm giving. Um, something called Lazy Bones. Yeah, it was called the Lazy Bones. It was invented by the Zenith Radio Corporation. I'm going to say the cassette tape. No. Ooh. It was the remote control. Oh. That's a genuinely interesting fact, isn't it? Oh, it is. Was that one, one on a wire? Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, so, we've got <laughs> geography and nature, history and religion, or sports and pastimes. Or we'll for history and religion, I think. Who was the Roman god of fire? Fire! 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 Wheels on. Who? Wheels on. Wheels. Wheels on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your answer? God of fire. I don't know. It was. It was. It's Vulcan. Oh, he, he's famous for rubber. Hmm. Okay, we've got geography and nature or sport and pastimes. Sport and pastimes, please. What game is played with 32 pieces on a board of 64 squares? Chess. Yes, well done. Yeah. Also musical. Yes, it was. I knew him so well. Huh? I knew it so well. No, oh, right, okay. In the end, he needs a little bit more. Let's than just do geography and nature. <laughs> what pea is both a freshwater fish and a resting place for a bird? Perch. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Why are we, go why on, are we suddenly gone a bit, um, Frankie Howard? No, he said piss. Um, right, so we're back. <laughs> we're, we're... <laughs> I nearly said piss. Piss. Um, I need, so you reset now, so you're back to full selection, arts and music, entertainment and celebrity, sports and pastime, science and invention, geography and nature, history and religion. Look for entertainment. Who was the director of the first Alien movie in 1979? J.J. Abrams. No. I don't know many directors. It was Ridley... Dean Ruffley. It was, well, he's probably there filming it. Probably played the f***ing alien. Um, it was Ridley Scott. Very famous, very famous. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, arts and music, 
Sports and pastimes, science and invention, geography and nature, history and religion. I'll let you pick and not tell me what the category is. <coughs> At the Russian roulette of game shows. The atria are the two upper chambers of which human organ? The heart. <gasps> and that is amazing because you don't have one of those. I do have a heart. Mm. Just because I stole it and keep it in a jar above my mantelpiece doesn't mean it's not there. Mm -hmm. um, so we have got arts and music, sports and pastimes, geography and nature, or history and religion. Geography and nature. The area of Staffordshire, which includes Stoke-on-Trent, Burslem and Tunstall, is known by what name? The Black Country. No, it's the Potteries. Oh, right, okay. Is it famous for pottery? Okay, so we've got... We've got sports and pastimes, history and religion. History and religion. I think this may well be the last one. No, I think we've got one more after oh. that one. <laughs> what colour were the world's first postage stamps issued in 1840? Do you know, Dean? You probably used them. Black. What, what are you going for? I've said black. Yes, and you would be right. Because they used to cost a penny. A penny black? Yes. Mm. Like a penny blackjack. Mojo. Last question. Sports and pastimes. Mm -hmm. In what sport would you use a boom? Boom. A boom. A boom. Well, a boom is a long pole. A boom. So I'm going to say pole vaulting. No, it would be sailing. Oh. <laughs> you know, the boom that they have. I like sailing. It involves yeah. a lot of semen. Okay. Well, I think I think that was that was. You know, that filled some time. So, um, stay with us, because after this break, it's that science that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time to go over to Mike for that science that is. That science, that is. In your youth, Lee, did you ever watch The Outer Limits? I think so, yeah. Do you not adjust your, adjust your television set? We are yeah. going the horizontal. You limits. are about to enter The Outer Limits. Yeah, that one. Mm. Good. Because they used to work with a lot of dimension crossing. Dimensions? Yeah, so crossing from dimension to dimension. Mm. Remember that stuff? Yes. Yeah, okay. It's a very, very, very unique um, sci-fi reference there. And I'm quite impressed with you that did it. We're going to be playing with dimensions today. And we're actually going to make a 2D object, or flat object, into a three-dimensional thing. Wow, even by the tone of your voice, it's thrilling me. <laughs> this is my deep and soothing voice for those people. Oh, are you going to be ASMR? that are about to fall asleep watching us do what we're going to do. Because what we're going to do is this, this little piece of paper that we have in front of us, this index card, mm. you're going to be able to travel through. Oh, great. Okay, and it's going to get significantly larger. Wow, Mike, how, how? That's what I'm going to show you now. The first thing we need to do to make things larger, we need to make things smaller. Oh. So what I want you to do is fold your index card as precisely as you can in half in landscape. So that's the long way, okay? I have done that. Okay, and you need the, the lines to be on the inside. The lines have got to go inside? Yes. Oh. Otherwise it doesn't work. Done that. Okay. Now, with your scissors. Yep. Okay, you need to make a small incision, okay? All right, Edward. Okay, and quite close to it, maybe about yeah, about half a centimetre from the edge. Mm -hmm. Cut down towards the centre fold, but don't cut all the way. Leave a little little connector. Towards where I folded it? Yes, towards the centre fold. From what I've been told, the lady is a centre fold. <sighs> What's with the deep sigh? Okay. Okay. So have you gone very close to the edge? I have, oh, yeah. So it's quite a small one. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Now, 
flip your, your index card 180 degrees and cut the same width and length in the opposite direction. Oh, so turn it over so that the folded side is facing down. Mm hmm And do the same thing. Yeah. Again, do not complete the cut. Okay. Okay. And you're just going to keep repeating that action all the way along. Flipping and folding. Oh, okay. And cutting. Do, do, do. Are we doing origami? Is this what we're doing? Oh, no, it's better than origami because you don't use scissors in origami, do you? Just folding, folding in oh. origami. Meow, 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 meow. Let me, do you not, let me see. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm no, doing no. it. Not doing as you've been told. I did do it. Look what I have here. I've got, um, why have I done it wrong? Okay, so you just flip it on the, the one axis like this. I have to do it again then. You'll have to start again. Luckily, knowing that you're no good at following directions, you have a second index card there. <laughs> right, so, first cut. First cut from the flappy open end. Towards to the, the foldy bit, but not quite. the foldy bit, don't all the way, yeah. Okay, and, and then, then. Rotate, no, 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 no. Right. Move the folded end that's at the top, rotate it down. Oh, okay. And then chop and there. It, and then cut the other way, yes. Oh, okay, I went from the other end, you, you see. You did go to the other end. And then flip it back. Flip it back and go again. Okay. And you didn't make repeat. it very clear. Really? I managed to do it quite, quite successfully, so it was clear enough for me. Granted, I was the one talking, but still. Bow, 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 bow. What's it? What, what song is that you're doing? Just a general, just a general. Okay. Well, you'll be glad to know we're not doing that science this, that is next week. That's because it's Halloween. No, it's not. That's because it's not Halloween. No. Um, next week we have a, a guest coming in to join us. Ooh. Yes, so we have the mus musical artiste Smashby coming in to talk to us and talk about their new single. Oh. Which will be exciting. And what would the name of that single be, Mike? Bad Influence. Oh. Ah. Some might say that's what you are to me. A bad Influence? Hmm. Hmm. Abusive Care is what I got called once, but that's... A... I'm bored now. You're bored now. Well, you should have done it right the first time, really, shouldn't you? <laughs> Let me know when you're done. I'm doing it very precisely, otherwise you'll shout and beat me. Again, abusive carer. Done, mate. You done? Done it, Daddy. Don't call me Daddy. <laughs> For a couple of reasons. You're significantly older than me. <laughs> um, and the last person to call me daddy was 22. Oh, good grief. It was disgusting. I had half a mind not to, to continue fellating him. Anyway, <laughs> once you've done that, what you want to do is you've got this little springy thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. With the folded bits at the top. Yes. Okay. Ignore the first folded bit. The first folded bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to cut along the, the fold, apart from the first folded bit. Of what? Which one? So, the second one. So, you've got the first one there. Yeah. So, you pop your scissors in the gap and cut there. Of the second one? Second. And continue on, but not the first or last oh, okay. top bit. Okay. Can I open it up? No. No. I am going to do it a different way. Did I say do it a different way? No, because I don't. I can't get my blade into the crease, so I'm just going to snip. No, off. don't do that. It won't work. Well, I have done now, but it's just the same thing. Fine, do it your way. Don't do what you've been told. It's the same. It's not the instruction you were given, so it's not the same. But not the last one. Not the first and last. Okay, I've done that. Okay. 
I haven't, because I had to stop and despair of you for a moment, so. Okay, don't. Right. Now what you want to do is very carefully open the first, first bit. Just the first one? First, first link, so the one that you've not cut, yeah? Um, the first, okay. So like that. So open it, what? Open it up, like? Open it up so it's flat. Hang on. Okay. Okay. And then do the same on the other end. Okay, so you've got two flat pieces. Yeah. Right, now with the lines towards you. What lines? So the lines on the index card. Yeah. Yeah, that were on the inside. Gently pull. Okay. And if you have a look. Is... You've created a loop you can fit through. Did I do it? Yeah, so, so try and open up the, the, the space in between. There you go. And that should fit around your head. There you go. So you've actually, see, you've crossed into a different dimension. You went from this two dimension into the third dimension. That's science, that is. You've got a nerve. That science, that is. Dimensions. You owe me. I owe you nothing. You owe me the last 10 minutes of my life back. You have only wasted them anyway. Because <laughs> I genuinely concentrated on that, Mike. You got it wrong the first time as to well. To make a f***ing paper chain and put it over my head. And to, for you to go, oh, you've gone into another dimension. Well, it is. It's gone from two dimensions into three. New axis. I say that. Well, There's you, your dimension. Now you've just broken it, haven't you? Just wrecked your dimension. Well, you're not the first man to say that. <sighs> Do you decorate your house with that at Christmas? No, do I? have got decorations. Have you not seen my Christmas decorations before? Yeah, I have. But you could, though. You could cut... You could cut that into different colours and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're question, just despairing of question, you, question why you exist. There you go. It's amazing. Yeah, thanks. Well, that's almost the show. That's almost the end of the show for this week. Remember to join us on our social media at the Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. This is why no one likes you. Can't have nice things around you. <laughs>